You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for September 1st, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from a holding pen far outside every voter focus group in America, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Hi, Drift Glass. Hi, Blue Hi. Gal. Hi, long week. Yeah. Yeah, and we long, are long. thinking so much about people in Houston. I have family in Houston and yep. uh, they are doing okay. They have, uh, actually, they are they are doing better than a lot of people. Um mm-hmm. But, boy, we are really uh, certainly thinking of the people uh, suffering under what has happened in Houston. And and furthermore, uh, in Mumbai, in Nepal, in Bangladesh. Yes, in Bangladesh, and, which you are You know, there's underwater. a lot going on where 1,200 people have died from floods. Yeah. And yeah. science is real. And these yeah. storms are worse than ever. And we have to start um, pushing. <laughs> we are. We are. I say start. Yeah, we have we to start. We are pushing back. But we yeah. we. we as a world, cannot allow science deniers to run things ever again. No. And this is very bad. Everything's very bad in terms of the government that we have in power. And you know yes. that, and we know that. Uh, um, we're recording this on Thursday afternoon, by the way, uh, because because of stuff. Right. Um, <laughs> because of life, and because we're blowing out of here tomorrow to go pick up uh, Junior Dude mm-hmm. and bring him back for the weekend and ask him about certain developments that are a lot. No, we're kidding. It's it's, it's all good. Um, <laughs> we don't know. We don't know what his social his social life has know. definitely changed since he we arrived at college, and that's yeah. good. He has new friends, and that's good. So you know, He's, but... his name is Gator now, and he <laughs> uh, he runs a stable of ladies. I understand. Uh, no. Oh no, that's that's the other guys. Yeah, that's the movie. yeah. Uh, I think we're. I think he's fine, but he is yeah. doing he's doing well in managing things. He only texts me when he can't find something that he packed and or he needs something else and that's exactly the way college students are and and knowing our as our house knows our actual residence understands Mm -hmm. that he is returning to us this weekend this is the the day uh actually yesterday was the day when the uh dryer decided to die yeah (laughs) this is it really is this week in appliances yeah And, and we're not fundraising for these things no, no, anymore no. because this no. is we know that there's a hurricane and there's a, a whole bunch of other things send your money send asking your money. for In your fact, money but uh drift as you said to me this morning we are what got rehabbing our house one you know appliance uh, one appliance five hundred and six thousand yeah. dollars bill yeah. at a time at and a time. this is the year for spe- i just have said this is the year for spending money yeah. we don't have we're going into debt and i hate debt but uh you know, we're we're getting we're we're making absolutely necessary repairs. We need a furnace. We need yeah. an air conditioner. We need a washer dryer. Yep. These are things that you know. Tire, well, welcome to first world problems. Plumbing. You yeah. know, I'm not I am not complaining because we are not in Houston. We are not in Mumbai. We are not no. suffering. Warm and dry. Con- we we have healthy kids and they're in school and we're and, we're yeah. incredibly lucky. We're incredibly um, blessed. And the reason. Yeah. The reason I got on this train was we have we have uh, a number of local listeners, and I want to let them know that tomorrow you will never hear me do this again. <laughs> uh, but tomorrow, you sh- if you if you can go out to Walmart <laughs> uh, on I believe Leland Avenue or Leland Street, it's just off Sixth Street. Mm-hmm. Um, a local radio station, local TV, and a bunch of other people are sponsoring uh, a, a day long fundraiser. Um, raising money and perishable, non-perishable goods to to send to Texas, to send mm-hmm. to the Gulf Coast. Mm-hmm. Packages Texas, of Louisiana. diapers, things like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. bottles of a local, water, those kind of things. Local TV station will match donations up to a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Okay. So, well, um, look and, look up in your local area, check Facebook and check social media yeah. in your local area and your local TV stations, and see if anyone else is doing that kind of thing because I think that is happening all across the country where people are getting mobilized to help. Uh, I did hear the latest I heard from the ground, from not from Trump, not from you know the governor and so forth, but from actual uh, FEMA officers 
from mm-hmm. Texas talking was that they really think that maybe the rain is about to end. And yeah. so that then it becomes, you know, recovery rather than rescue. And that right. is a turning point that's really critical. And mm-hmm. uh, we need to keep them in our thoughts uh, and keep them in uh, our checkbooks as well, because uh, yeah. it's going to take a long time. And I mean, when I think about the family members that I have down there are middle-aged professionals and, uh, you know, they are... Lots of people, it turns out, in Houston area never lost power. You don't necessarily lose power in a flood. Uh, and uh, they did not lose power, but uh, they have nowhere to go to work. And they have nowhere to go to work for how many months now? You know, will right. they still be, will they be able to go back to work by December? At all, uh, right. You know, right. w- will they have a company to go back to work to? Uh, mm-hmm. These are um, huge questions weighing on people. And the mm-hmm. impact on the economy and the impact on our environment and... Uh, I said to one colleague today, you know, I'm really kind of shocked that gas prices haven't jumped yet. They, and this they have. Is... <laughs> they, have. <laughs> they have. Okay. They have. They're, they're go- yeah, they're going up. They're going. I believe I understand. I'm getting this from youngest child, mind you, who told okay. me I'm a, a car in today. But mm-hmm. she was surprised that gas prices and water prices, you know, shot up in the area. I said, well, that's just that's how that that's how that happens. There's a massive amount of refinery capacity in the area, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's being priced area. into the cost of gas. Yep. So that's that's the way that goes. And just in um, time for Labor Day weekend, when you have to go pick up college students, there's a <laughs> gas goes up to three dollars instead of two. Yeah. Well, uh, and I, I was I, I was a played a very very small part in the uh, Chicago effort uh, of, during Katrina, mm-hmm. and it is really impressive when um, the government and um, through all of its many many powerful. Entities and organizations and affiliates and partnerships puts competent people in charge of things Mm -hmm. and gets them going in the right direction and gets them moving. I was Mm -hmm. incredibly impressed that the the, this was this was a place where people were being airlifted out of uh, Louisiana uh, and literally dropped off um, still wearing their muddy clothes. Mm. And they set up in a high school. Uh, up until midnight, and we had all sent us home like one o'clock. And it turned out the air conditioning was blown and it was roasting in there. And by eight o'clock the next morning, they had moved the entire operation across town to a different location, set it up again, and we're ready to go. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. you know, what's really cool about competent, capable um, government that employs competent, capable people to help people with their problems mm-hmm. is sort of like what we on the left think should be the baseline. Mm-hmm. Government should be boring. It should mm-hmm. just deal mm-hmm. with people's problems. Um, and it should help them when they need help, and it should protect us from what we need protection from, and it should be run by competent professionals that we hire every two years and but, fire but when I do class, fucking job. But Drew Class, we knew this in Katrina. We yes, knew. We did. I mean, this is you have said this to me many times that the one time when David Brooks just threw up his hands and said, oh, my God. Yeah, I've had it. I I've had it. This is incompetence. This anymore. is just yeah. incompetence. It's just it's a crime. Yeah. yeah. And now he recovered and nicely. He sure did. Yeah. But the this is this is when, you know, and I, I I'm hesitant to say this because I don't want you to have a coronary right in front of me. But um, this is a this is one of those instances when both sides really do appreciate competent government. The two yeah. times when conservatives really think government ought to come in and get their shit together uh-huh. and work despite the cost of government right. is uh, national defense and Natural disasters. Right. And particularly natural disasters that happen nearby where my, me or my family are. Right. And I, I hate to say that, but it used to be that wasn't the case. It wasn't just me or my family. It wasn't just, right. you know, when, when the Ted Cruz attitude right. of, well, New Jersey what needs New to Jersey? fend for itself. Well, yeah, that's Mike New York City people. Right? Mike Pence saying, you know, yeah, that I, right. I, it breaks my heart, but I don't want my grandkids to pay for this. So let's find places where we should cut and cut and cut because God forbid Let's we cut have Medicare. Yes, anything. right, yeah. right, right, um, right. And that's that's an endemic, and now that's baked into the cake. And yes, but it if is. you but if you unbundle um, why the response to natural disaster is um, a reflex, mm-hmm. it's to, we want people who have uh, who are suffering mm-hmm. to be helped. Yep. There is no really ideological. There's no philosophical difference between. Um, helping people in Houston who have been drowned out of their city mm-hmm. and helping people who who have, through no fault of their own 
or through their financial circumstances are going to go bankrupt on, for medical bills. Yeah, right. There's and no difference. That's right. There's no difference. There's no – then what you're talking about are people who need assistance. Now, in every so, – so now, let, let's reverse engineer this, okay? Mm-hmm. The argument you will hear from Republicans all the time against basically every program to help anyone who ever lived who isn't them, who isn't a white person they personally know, is, you know, welfare queens, corruption, abuse, free stuff, moochers, blah, blah, blah. All right. I will grant you that every institution made by man has some element of corruption in it. Mm Mm-hmm. Just It just goes with the territory. Uh, we elected one president for some reason. We elected the biggest con man we could find, the biggest ripoff artist we could find. Now, remember, Donald Trump ripped off the taxpayers to the tune of $17 million. Right, right. Uh, that he didn't earn, didn't deserve, because he filled out the right paperwork and got the government to give him $17 million. I, I, was it Hurricane Sandy? Yeah, no, it was... Um, 9-11? No, no, I can't remember. It was one I'm of sorry. those. It was one I of those things. Pop- I didn't mean to pop quiz you, <laughs> yeah. but okay. So Donald Trump ripped off the American taxpayer for seventeen million dollars for let's, something to do with disaster relief. Mm-hmm. I will look it up. Uh, yeah, I'll look. All it. right. Should, let's. Should that be the baseline then? Okay. Then we should never have disaster relief again. We should undo the program completely. We should cancel it. We should gut it because some asshole ripped off the program. Does mm-hmm. anyone seriously think that? Well, of course not. Of course nobody thinks we shouldn't um, help Texas recover because a few years ago, Donald Trump ripped ripped off the American taxpayer because he's a c- cheating con man moocher. Now, yeah. this, now apply the same logic to Medicare, Medicaid, um, affordable college, food stamps, uh, uh, aid for uh, 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 fuel aid, um, housing aid, housing assistance. On and on, on. all the social programs we put in place to help people that, for the most part, do what they're designed to do. And there's Mm -hmm. occasionally people who rip the system off and abuse the system and game the system. Mm -hmm. Make the system better. That's great. Make the system in such a way that that a Donald Trump can't come along and rip you off. I'm all for that. It was Hurricane Wilma in 2004, 2005. Uh, 2005 was Wilma. And he apparently had $3,000 worth of damage to Mar-a-Lago and got $17 So He cheated. He's a cheater. Yeah. He's a moocher and a cheater. So if you believe that uh, disaster recovery is important enough to let Donald Trump rip you off for $17 million because he's a con man and a scumbag, then by the same logic, you have to accept the premise that Medicare and Medicaid and college and public school and housing and all the fucking rest of it are important enough to the health and safety of this country to tolerate the fact that they're going to be abuses Mm -hmm. and you pursue them and you bring them to justice and et cetera. But you don't say, well, uh, uh, Donald Trump's just a a welfare queen. Let's never give out any assistance to any storm victims ever again because that asshole screwed it up for everybody. Well, and I feel a lot better about uh, your argument that we we, you know, have accountability and we yes. definitely go after people that cheat the go- the government and the system. If I saw Wells Fargo bankers going to jail. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you're going to if you're going to have a standard of this is this is where we are, you have to be honest in your dealings. Mm-hmm. And if you're not honest with in your dealings and you steal from someone, Mm-hmm. Whether you are stealing on the streets of a city or you're stealing in the Wall Street offices of your bank, uh, there's consequences for that. And that's just not true. That, and no. that's never been true. So no. uh, we need to move on because we're just we're, we've yeah. got a lot to talk about. Well, today. and we, we need to, uh, first of all, give a shout out to our sponsor. Uh, again, <laughs> doing a land office business. Uh, we're the good Lord split you. We're the good Lord split you. Emergency farewell party planners. Uh, doing great business in Washington this uh, and uh, this week. Customer of the week this week is Donald Trump's former uh, event organizer, a guy named Mr. George Gigikos or Gigikos or Gigikos. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so you know, fire me because I'm not doing my job. <laughs> uh, who was fired because uh, Donald Trump's Phoenix mob was insufficiently huge and yeah. because the ratings sucked. And so you got to fire somebody for that because that's really important. And uh, actually, after, the cameras showed how small the crowd was. That oh, was the other problem. It was pathetic. And, you know, the cameras turned around. Yeah. You, the, you know, at, none of the events did the cameras turn around during the election. That was yeah. not allowed. He could he could point back there, but the cameras were stationary. Yeah, and he and yeah. he would mock them, even though that yeah. was the agreement. He would say, well, they're not going to turn around. They're not going to show you. There were no lines outside. There were, and, and no, it was a complete 
fucking failure. And he had to look out at a half empty auditorium and lie about it because that's what he does. So his official firing goon sacked Mr. Jijikos because Donald Trump doesn't get his hands dirty sacking people personally. We understand that Mr. Jijikos's replacement is a Mr. Gregory Grigory Potemkin. Am I pronouncing that correctly? <laughs> um, and we wish him the best of luck with that. Um, yeah, also, we, we wonder how many Scaramucci's this guy will last. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and I would I would urge you all to look up uh, Gregory Potemkin. Yeah. Um, he's the guy. Look up Gregory Potemkin, Catherine the Great, Potemkin Villages. And you'll know, have a nice retroactive laugh on us. Although our listeners are very smart. I'm sure they know they who that is. They already know about Potemkin. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. Um, and, and, of course, our ongoing sponsor, technically, is a salad because technically – it's a salad. We should probably blitz through this week in review to to uh, point up the fact that uh, as we hung up the phone with each other and went and collapsed in each other's arms and made out for a few minutes before the kids got home last week, um, Donald Trump pardoned uh, the uh, one of the most evil people in politics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sheriff Joel, yep. yeah, his his own Bull Connor, his own jackbooted thug. If you yeah. if you took a little bit of Bull Connor, a little bit of Fred Phelps. And a whole lot of asshole, and you just made a person. Uh, that person would be Joe Arpaio, and 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 without uh, him even being sentenced, uh, Donald Trump pardoned him for two reasons. Uh, Donald Trump loves jackbooted authoritarian fascist thugs. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, racist authoritarian. Uh, he's racist. He's a racist. He's a he was a fellow traveler in the uh, in the birther movement. Birther movement. Uh, no, but still, Donald Trump has never produced the the incredibly interesting stuff that he was discovering in Hawaii because he lied because yeah. he lied yeah. to a bunch of racist morons and that got him elected. And media types as well who just yeah. went, oh really? Yeah, well, that's very interesting. That's a story we can talk about. Um, and and third and most important, of course, is to send a message to. Um, the rest of the thugs and goons who he employs, who he who do his law breaking for him, um, that uh, don't worry, just lie, just lie to Mueller, lie to everybody. I'll pardon everybody for anything. And what did uh, Mueller do in response? This is yeah, interesting. It was so beautiful. You tell him, Blue Gal, it was so beautiful. <laughs> Mueller went to New York and started talking to A.G. Schneiderman <laughs> about <laughs> money laundering. Tell him why. <laughs> Because yeah. he can't pardon himself for state crimes under right. the banking law, right? Yeah, you can't, the, fed, you, uh, the, the presidential pardon doesn't extend to state crimes. Yeah. And so uh, that's a clear, to me, as an outsider who's also not a lawyer, a clear shot across the bow saying, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, motherfucker. Go ahead. Yep. Go ahead. Because we'll just haul Manafort into state court. Like you don't have any, you don't have any uh, area where you haven't done something wrong and we won't find it. Right. That's the deal. Uh, when you were just a sleazy real estate developer in New York, you got away with this because you were wired into all the other sleazy assholes who right. run this sleazy asshole business. Now you're in a whole different universe uh, where you're actually expected to deliver on shit you said, uh, even you know, just, mm -hmm. just some of it, just any of it. And clearly you're not capable of doing that. Uh, you can keep whipping up racist mobs and turning them loose on the rest of us. And, and that is what Charles Blow said today. And actually, this is something you and I talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's worst case scenario. What happens uh, when an attempt to remove him from office is made? And he says, fuck, no, I'm not going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That's when it gets interesting. That's mm -hmm. when we start um, uh, redoing the basement. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that yeah. we haven't reached that point yet. Um, Can we take this opportunity, since it's such a good segue for that, to talk about the uh, focus group? Yes, 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 yes. That was on Chris Hayes last night, and they yes. showed a little bit of it on Morning Joe this morning. And it is... Not all Trump voters. It was a mixture of Pittsburgh voters. But among them was what Chris Hayes called the reluctant Trump voter. Yeah. And I liked how Chris Hayes actually started his segment with almost an apology of, yeah, we know there's this genre where they just interview Trump voters to find out what they think and everyone's yeah. exhausted by it. Right. Yes. We are. Um, but these voters, first of all, they said exactly what I thought they'd say. You know, you know, I don't like the tweeting. You know, I don't. I really don't like the tweeting. And uh, the, um, you know, he he needs to get get more professional help in there. You know, the he, he's supposed to be hiring the best people. Yeah, the best people. And that is the end of their critique, right. Of Donald Trump. Of everything. I don't like the tweeting. And 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 the deal is. And he's that not getting anything done. He's not doing he's not stuff. Not getting anything done because you know he's not working with the Congress to get anything done. And so you know, I just I think he's wasting his time with the tweeting. And that's it. And it's not his policies are terrible. 
Because we all know that what this group of people want is a strong white Republican male leader who will say fiscal uh, discipline while he cuts upper middle class taxes and rich right. people's taxes. Punches hippies and is nominally Punches Christian. Punches hippies and nominally Christian and does and does all of those things because then they can go back to sleep. Right. This is back and to George Bush. This tweeting, is back to the Bush it administration. Is, it is. It is back to George Bush. And I and what what I found fascinating watching this, and I wrote about it today, is what they're really saying is they wanted to vote for Donald Trump, and they wanted Donald Trump to turn into Jeb Bush. Right, right. Because do- voting for Donald Trump is a way of saying fuck you to the system and no to Hillary, which are right. two things that they wanted to check off. Mm-hmm. And then they wanted to go to sleep. Right. And just know that... You know, things can go along and we have a white man in the office. We have a Republican in office. Fox News is right about everything again and has the endorsement of the White House. And All is we don't right have with to the world. think about anything anymore. Right. And that's exactly they, they wanted and to. And the tweets to, interrupt that. Yeah, right? yeah every day. They every wanted, day. This is something that you and I have written um, mm-hmm. long ago, that they want um, their world to go back to its proper wingnut default setting. Mm-hmm. Right. And and then they can just turn their brains off, um, blame uh, Hurricane Katrina on uh, Barack Obama. Obama yep. Uh, because yep. that's you know that's how they because remember. Which the never happened. Hey, you know they remember yeah. bad stuff, and liberals do bad stuff. Therefore, mm-hmm. the bad stuff must have been caused by the liberals. Right. And they don't remember you know anything. They they just they just don't. And the thing that uh, again, I I just I listened to this in passing a couple of times because it was on everywhere. And it was just this sort of sense of exhaustion um, from people who were looking, sort of peering through the glass at these mutants and and freaks and uh, who got all dressed up to come down and tell people they was disappointed, you know, because mm-hmm. he said all these things, I believe, and then he didn't do them. And I just wish he would because he, he's not act, he's not even acting professional. Right. Right. Much less and presidential. He's not even. The whole point was you voted for him because he's not a politician. Well, and you voted for him, and you and and this is the and, and then they went around the room. This is there are two other points to be, to be made here, probably twenty, but let's make two quick ones. The first is um, they went around the room asking who Robert Mueller is. Mm-hmm. All the Hillary voters knew, all the Democrats knew, and none of the Republican voters knew or had yeah, an opinion. Right. And, this and, is the. I thought that was the big takeaway from this, yeah. and so did Chris Hayes, which is yeah. oh my god, this is about. What Fox News, people who get all of their news from Fox, what they know and what they don't know. Yes. And they don't know anything about anything outside of Donald Trump is a great man who occasionally goes too far. With the, with the tweets. With well, the and, tweets. and the thing is, the people who are um, sort of reading outside of Fox News bubble or the people right. who really pay attention to news, you know, read the Wall Street Journal and watch Fox to get both sides – do know about Mueller. And the message that they are getting, because Fox News has to have a message for them, Fox and Friends today said, you know, this Mueller investigation, it's gone on too long. Mm-hmm. Six too months long. is too long for an it's investigation. Too, too Benghazi, damn. Benghazi, 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 Benghazi. Yeah. You, you should know. have been able to do seven investigations of him by now. And, and um, Carolee said to me today, I love this one too, uh, look, if it takes Donald Trump longer than six months to do his taxes, it's going to take Bob Mueller longer than <laughs> Six months yeah. to investigate yeah. Trump Russia. <laughs> well, and, and and these people are also separating themselves from the, you know, I, I read uh, via a passed around email that I should probably not be seeing, but I, this is a Brent Bozell rant about, um, you know, what's happening is the rhinos. Yeah, the, no, this is the, the conservative HQ that I get. I, uh, I subscribe to that one just to see what's up there. Oh, yeah. And I do want to make – I don't want to make a correction. I do, I do want to make an ex, a little explanation. When we say Fox News, Milt, Milt Shook on the Twitter corrected me. It's pointing out that you know 10 million people don't watch Fox every day, and that's true. Yeah, right. But it, there is a uh, there is a multiplication and amplification factor when you, when you put it across Fox News – and hate radio and Breitbart mm-hmm. and the blogs and Facebook. Don't you know Facebook is is the place where Fox News stories always end up. Yep. So people yep. who don't watch Fox and, and and stop watching after Megan Kelly, you know, suddenly turned into a vicious dyke who attacked Donald Trump, uh, somehow all know the talking points anyway. Because there's this delivery system across multiple domains to make sure all the wing nuts say all the same things at the same time and they all believe the same thing at the same time. So when when you hear me or perhaps Blue Gale say Fox News, it is Fox News. It is that's the headwater, that's the po- that's the source of the poison. But it's also shorthand for the entire um, 
the wingnut communication network, the, all of them. Um, and the second thing is that uh, the obvious question at this focus group uh, was the one no one asks and no one ever asks, mm -hmm. ever asks, which is what the fuck is wrong with you people? Yep. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Because they don't – because nobody – and you and I know the answer. Every every liberal knows the answer. We know we can tell you exactly what's wrong with these people. We can trace the the paternity and maternity of what's wrong with these people back 40 years. Mm -hmm. We can tell you exactly how they got this way, exactly how the media failed us, exactly how the Republican Party has gone completely fucking mad in public. And nobody wanted to talk about it because it was too frightening and embarrassing and it was also a career killer. But And now it's gotten so bad. The monster is here. It's not out there someplace. It's not, it's not getting here. It's fucking here. And the monster's in the White House. It's inside the building. Mm -hmm. And these people put him there. And no, and, and what, was, what he was like, what he was going to do, what his, his, uh, his racism and rage and lying and sexism and, and predation um, and just sleazy awfulness was fully on display. They had to choose to do this, but they have been, they have been wearing a shock collar for so long. Yep, I, I I stole that from you in my post today. The oh. shock collar, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> the thought, the mere thought of possibly not voting for the Republican or voting for Hillary Clinton was so traumatizing and terrifying mm -hmm. for sixty-two mm -hmm. million assholes out there that they just it, it never even entered their heads because mm -hmm. Democrats they've been hearing for for a quarter of a century and longer. Um, when Republicans stopped, just gave up trying to argue policy and started arguing Democrats are monsters, Democrats are evil, Democrats are liars, liberals are, 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 are evil, terrorist-loving, America-hating traitors. And that happened decades ago. And that's all these people have been hearing for, for most of their lives. And now in this little room where all these voters are sitting, nobody asked the question, what the fuck is wrong with you people? What and just isolate, focus in on them. And I'm not, I'm not saying threaten them. I'm saying just keep at one or two of them. Ask them why do you believe such stupid shit? Why mm -hmm. do you believe? Why? What is wrong with you that this guy can rub his ass in your face over and over and over again, and you say it smells like roses? What the fuck is wrong with you? Make them cry. Make them sad. Make them unhappy. They came into this room to answer these questions. Make them break down and start yelling because Hillary's a lying lesbian bitch who killed Vince Foster. Make them say it. Mm -hmm. Don't let them get away with saying, well, I don't like his tweets. And mm -hmm. you know, it mm -hmm. makes me mm -hmm. No, yep. no. Yep. Make them own it. Make them own it 100 percent because these people ain't going anywhere. Right. You know, right. Uh, one of the, one well, of the they're, things... they're already reinventing themselves as oh, the yeah. one who didn't like the tweets. You know, I never, I like you know, I, I said back in March, I didn't like the tweets. I, so I, that gives me, that's my get out of jail free card. Absolutely. And their leader is Joe Scarborough. You know, right. absolutely. He's a Democrat. I, yeah. We've been very hard on Donald Trump on this show. After the years we spent sucking his dick, we suddenly got very, he attacked my girlfriend and then I got real hard on him. And, I and, but, you know. I absolutely do believe that that's, that is why they they were so nice to him is because he covered up their relationship. Yeah. And I, it, it just, the more I think about it, the more I realize there is this club, you know, yeah. as you said many times, there's this club. They all know each other. They all fundraise for each other's little charities. They all pretend they're good people. And what they're really doing is washing each other's backs uh, with the drinking water of our children, yeah. you know, yeah. basically, yeah. and screw you. And they you. don't care about this is the one thing where um, for entirely opposite reasons, we can be on the same page with our with our opponents, with with the base voters. Um, the media, by and large, the Beltway media doesn't care about you at all. Right. They care about uh, the the pr the eyeballs you bring, the products you buy, the ratings you give them, so that they get promotions and raises and money. But they don't give a shit about your you or your life or anything. They they give a shit when you are um, background extras in some disaster that they can film, mm -hmm. and that's really it. They don't they don't give a shit about you at all. Um, and uh, they have developed this in entirely self contained culture where they tell each other fairy tales about what America is really like. Um, I likened it once again to uh, Prince Prospero's palace, mm -hmm. in, uh, Mask of the Red Death, Edgar Allan Poe's Mask of the Red Death. It's a plague raging outside. So Prince Prospero brings his thousands of friends in, seals the gates to keep the plague out. And right. they party like crazy inside right. Right. until the plague gets is inside. Right. And then right. then things get real exciting. Well, the plague is now inside their, their palace and they don't know what to do about it. So they scream Trump is a Democrat. I yeah, mean, that's what Joe Scarborough is doing. Yeah, every fucking day. 
Yeah, and and no no acknowledgement whatsoever that these are Republican voters, that this no. is the Republican Party, that this is the racist Republican Party. And that I mean, I just keep going back to 2015 when Trump voters who were registered Republicans and who were going to vote in the New Hampshire primary, regardless of whether Trump was a candidate or not, right. said, you know, he's saying what I'm thinking. And it is it's a Breitbart comment section. You've said it many times. It's the Fox News Chiron being read aloud. That is Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And whether he did it because he is that old white guy watching Fox and mm -hmm. really just re thinks that's political analysis, like every old white guy Fox viewer thinks it is. And that's what, you know, he's one of us. He's going to give us success. Or he consciously saw an opportunity to manipulate the rubes. I tend to believe the first half, which mm -hmm. is he just became that guy because he was yeah. a racist and because he got his news from Fox for the past, what, five years, 10 years, maybe? Yeah, yeah. You know, and whether he was a Democrat back in New York when it was a good time to be a Democrat yeah, it's, and it's, get along it's, with people. It's like joining a country club. It doesn't yeah. mean anything. It's where right. you go to make contacts and connections and, and increase your earning power. Right. Uh, but it, it, the simple it's a very simple equation. Uh, the Republican Party has spent a an entire generation. Uh, and billions of dollars uh, building a Republican Party base uh, of credulous morons. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump has spent his entire life honing the skill of bilking credulous morons. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect marriage. It's, they were made for each other. And and the fact that he's a he's a filthy old racist um, is just makes it easier for him to uh, stand up and say crazy shit and believe it because he gets it off of Fox News, because he gets it off of hate radio, because he gets it off of Breitbart. But he channels these people right back at them. He is their echo chamber. He's not their spokesman. He is their their their, their megaphone. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and that, that thing you wrote in our notes, too, about 28 percent of voters of Republicans, I believe it is, right. isn't it? Or is it voters? voters? No, 20 percent of voters. Voters yeah. uh -huh. believe that a government shut down to build the wall is a good idea. Right. Now, cut to... <laughs> April of 2008. George Bush uh, has screwed up everything he's touched. He's destroyed entire countries. He's let cities drown. He has taken a uh, surplus and turned it into the biggest deficit in history. The global economy is perched on the edge of complete collapse. His approval rating, 28%. Yep. We know who these people are. Yeah. We know exactly who they are, and we know exactly how they got that way. And that is why that question will never be asked in any focus group anywhere. Because once you answer the question, this is like Doctor Who. This is the question that must never be asked. Yeah. And never yeah. be answered. Because once you answer the question honestly, then you are you are either part you have to join the devil's army mm -hmm. and become evil. You have to you have consciously decide I'm part of this horrible thing and I'm just gonna embrace it. I'm gonna go with it. Or you have to take direct moral action. You yeah. have to stand yeah. against it. You have to. Because you realize these people are evil. They've been trained to be terrible people, and they're going to keep being terrible people and voting for terrible things. And what they want most in the world is to, is to screw you, to make you cry. These people don't give a shit about anything except rolling back Barack Obama's agenda mm -hmm. at all. They don't care mm -hmm. what effect it has on anybody. They right. just hate him for being him so fucking much that hating him and undoing him defines their entire identity. That's their politics, yep. Yep. And you can't reason with people like that. You can stop them. You can halt them. You can vote them out of office. You can shame them in public, but you can't ever fucking reason with these people. And that is a terrifying – because that's a third of these people's audience. That's yeah. a third of the people yeah. who buy their products. And you can right. never say that on television or you know, right. you become a pariah like me. Uh, this isn't really Bible bitch related. It's more uh, falling under the category of preachers behaving badly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I didn't want to leave our podcast without talking about Joel Osteen and yeah. uh, the the pit that he fell into this week with, uh, you know, his church. His church is, is in the front line of the storm, and that's true, uh, but his church is one of these mega churches. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is really not about his church and the building so much. This reminds me so much of the... Uh, Harambe and some other cultural markers where this is a proxy war for a whole bunch right. of other things that are going on, whether Joel Austin let victims of the hurricane into his church or not. It's Cecil the Lion. Cecil the Lion, exactly. Right. Um, because Joel Austin preaches prosperity gospel, which if you're not familiar with that, it's about 
uh, comforting the comfortable. <laughs> it's yeah, making that money, making that. Well, and not just it, you know, it's not that crass. It's much more about, uh, demonstrating that God is there for you by solving your stresses in your first world life. Right. So, you know, I didn't know I was going to make that private jet on time or that jet that we'd leased. And so, and I've actually heard him talk about this on the radio uh, because he's on, you know, when you're going through the dial, I find him fascinating from a theological standpoint of, you know, we leased this plane, but we didn't make it to the airport in time and the plane was going to leave and uh, they had somewhere else we had to be. And so we just prayed and prayed and we made it to that leased private jet on time, yeah. you know? Well, pro- prosperity doctrine has, has been around for a long time. Oh, yeah. And it's and long, ironically long or not ironically, you know, we, we're going through these cycles of the same thing. Very popular during the Gilded Age when, yes. pe- you know, white people were doing well. And here comes this gospel that says that's an indication that God is there for you. God favors you. God favors you. And so... Uh, that all works out real well when times are good and yeah. everybody's doing fine. That that matters in your bubble of my friend, my my family and my friends are doing good, and that's a sign that God loves us and God just loves us so much. And so, you know, we're going we're going to give where we can give, but really, it's about knowing the blessings of the Lord are on us right now. And so, right, yeah. all of a sudden, here comes. The 500-year storm, you know, Noah's flood, right. which is hitting poor people and rich people exactly the same. Yes. <laughs> and treating them exactly the same. Like... And uh, the lack of flood insurance is exactly the same mm-hmm. and so forth. And so what does it say about you that your house got flooded, that your house is ruined, that you've lost everything? Mm-hmm. Is that a sign that God isn't there for you? And uh, it's it shakes the foundation of that argument, which is a false argument to begin with, Mm -hmm. um, that somehow being satisfied with your you know relationship with God based on your bank account is the way to go. And uh, you know I I am I'm being very kind right now, Joel Austin, because we all know that he's a flake and a a con man. You know that's that's what this is. And you never see him not smiling no you never see well that's because joy comes from knowing that you're saved and that he god's taking care of you and all of your physical needs that's right uh because you're blessed that's you know be blessed that's what it's all Mm -hmm. about uh but when material comfort is removed for everybody and you see the total equality of a storm Mm -hmm. hitting you know fair and foul uh that argument collapses real quick well and the the converse of that argument mm-hmm. um yeah that was, if you're poor there must be something wrong with you well, right p- both poor you know the, the, you have a moral failing mm-hmm. if you're poor mm-hmm. you're, if you're mm-hmm. struggling then mm-hmm. it, it's you're not you're not praying in my church hard enough you're not hitting yeah. the collection plate hard enough yeah. you're not giving to me uh to to pay for my mm-hmm. lifestyle enough it's a ponzi scheme it's a, it's yeah. a pyramid yeah. scam yep um, you just keep, you know, the next tier pays the tier above it, and so right, on and so forth. Right. But the but the the ideological the the, the theological flip side of this was um, when Jerry Falwell and Pat Robertson, immediately after 9/11, who do they blame? The gays. They played the gays and the lesbians and, and the, the liberals, ACLU. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, it just it, it's just fucking automatic. Yeah, you know, it's, it's yeah. wired onto their board that if, if something catastrophic happens, mm-hmm. the first thing you got to do is find a goddamn liberal to blame for it, because God hates the left. And that's if you were speci- wondering and who specializes in that more than anyone is Newt Gingrich. Yep. Yep. And if you're wondering why it was impossible for those people in that focus group, the Trumpers, mm-hmm. the Republicans to 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 go into the bo- uh, voting booth, look at an obvious lying, racist con man, and it was physically impossible for them to vote for a Democrat. Mm -hmm. It's because wired onto their board is that exact same reasoning. Mm -hmm. If, because Democrats are the devil. Right. And, and, and liberals were to blame for 9-11 and. Yeah. So uh, why would you ever vote for that? And contrary wise, Drift Glass. Mm -hmm. Yes. There must be something good about Donald Trump. Yes. Because he's a millionaire. He's blessed and highly favored. He's, He's a billionaire. 
He's All not. Right, so we're going to switch he's... gears. I want to talk about the Nashville statement. Good Lord. Okay. Go for it, baby. Talk about circling the wagons <laughs> and, you know, into a very, very teeny tiny circle. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a group of evangelicals who met in Nashville this week and decided to issue a statement about, you know, the churches under siege and so forth. And sure enough, you know, churches are emptying out this, this empty the pews campaign that came after, uh, Charlottesville, uh, is actually a trend that's been going on for a few years. And, uh, believe me, millennials are, uh, not just, uh, a source of great consternation and how do we reach these people in corporate boardrooms. Churches are really struggling to figure out how, whether, if, when to get young people to come to church. They just Mm -hmm. don't want to. And uh, it's, it's really clear that to me that the smart churches that are attracting millennials, that are attracting people under 30 are the ones who are doing something in the community rather than just, trying to get everybody to heaven Mm -hmm. and that young people want to make a difference in this world. This world is not in a good shape and they don't, they don't care about money because access to housing. I mean, it really boils down to if you make it possible for a young adult of childbearing age and you know, that keeps going up, but uh, I keep thinking about, the um, GI Bill, which was mm-hmm. only for white people. Right. You know, right. the GI Bill only gave low interest government home owning loans to right. young white men. College as well. And, and you know, it was the best. And, and it was the single best investment this country made it in the did, last because years. Because it, it allowed pe- this allowed the baby boom to happen. It allowed right. people of childbearing age to start a middle class life. Yep. And we don't have that today for 21 to 35 year olds don't get that no. they don't have at the the housing market the way it is in most places where there are any jobs removes the possibility of a single family home for anyone earning what someone under 35 earns most people mm-hmm. and so that we have basically removed from possibility a middle class life for millennia, most millennials mm-hmm. and so it, it's what happened to our generation, the Gen X generation as well. We weren't going to have the CEO job, so we weren't going to care about the CEO job. We weren't right. going to care was, about management. Management was, was never going to. It was never going to happen. Right. I I will say, um, speaking for myself and people in my age cohort, which mm-hmm. are a little above and and much below me, um, uh, we put in our more than our share of one hundred hour weeks. Yeah, right. Right. Um, but it was never going to go to the, we're never going to end up in the boardroom. That was never going to happen. No, it was just someone 10 years older than you already had that job and was going to yeah. keep it till they were retired until they gave and, it to their grandkid. Right. And then they were going to give it to their grandkid. Exactly. And, <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed, I retweeted it. Um, 41% of the Harvard freshman class yes. this year is legacy. Yeah. That is astonishing. There's my word. Astonishing. It's astonishing. It's incredibly high. And and let me tell you, let me draw a, a quick straight line, because I know you want to get back to the national statement. Mm-hmm. Uh, a quick straight line between that statistic and two of my posts from this morning, mm-hmm. um, early, early Friday morning. Um, and I won't bore you with them, but it's Andrew Sullivan and David Brooks. And all I can say is the view from the ivory tower mm-hmm. is not exactly commanding. Right. No. The view from the ivory tower – Andrew Sullivan uh, has paid a shitload of money to write in, in NY Magazine – once a week, and I, I counted the words this morning, and he does exactly twice as many words uh, as David Brooks. So his his column, but only of, once a week. Once a week, so it's yeah. they both put it, produce about sixteen hundred words per week, and they're uh-huh. paid lavishly for both of those. And today, uh, Andrew Sullivan used two hundred and forty seven of his words to to wag his finger at the unaccountably illegal, illegally immune thug named Donald Trump, mm-hmm. and, and and good for him. And then six hundred and sixty two words. To talk about antifas. Yeah, of course. Of course. Because and, – and, and he even stops in the middle to say, I'm not saying that they're equivalent. Of course, there's been no physical violence. And, you know, if the right is more dangerous and, and, and the president doesn't, you know, have the back. There's no political backing for these people. But ideologically, they're identical. Oh, and he, this and is then he goes on with the rest oh my of God. it. And that's because he has the absolute causative, cozened – um, um, cocooned privilege mm-hmm. of being a gay, white, um, British, Tory, 
conservative, <laughs> um, <Douchebag>. libertarian, <laughs> Catholic <laughs> douchebag right. who will never miss a meal. There will always be some asshole in his crew mm -hmm. who will hire him in New York or Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. to crank this shit out until the day he keels over. Right. And he sits and he looks you know, over the rims of his glasses and he doesn't see my country at all. He has no idea what mm -hmm. this country does at all. Mm -hmm. But he has a very clear idea what he thinks the two sides of the battlegrounds are. And they're the same people who, who he was, I'm sure, having pissing matches with in college when he and, went to Harvard and, and let's, Oxford. Let's add, let's add the gender, yes. the gender oh, aspect of that because yeah. Andrew Sullivan got his audience from a bunch of boys mm -hmm. surfing the internet where he had cool links and cool video and cool pictures. Absolutely. And a, you know... Uh, British accented gay man uh, on the web doing that at the moment he did that got him his audience. A, yeah. you know, plump married woman doing exactly the same thing yeah. would get nothing. And you got to live in so, D.C. Or, or New York. Yeah, and, you, and, and you in, in the DC. Midwest, exactly. Yeah, um, so, uh, just, let me say one statement. Yeah, go ahead. Let me just want to ask, <laughs> and this is just, no, literally just one sentence. Over on David Brooks's column, he literally turned out the following sentence. It turns out that without an obvious social hierarchy, we all get to feel equally powerless. Okay. Yep. So white privilege uh, everywhere. Speaking of white privilege, uh, <laughs> these white male older pastors uh -huh. uh, facing emptying churches have decided that it's the gays' fault. Like you said, you know that this is about the moral failing of the church in standing up to the gays and not standing up for. Uh, traditional marriage. It's always those Procreative, people. heterosexual marriage is the only thing that matters. So uh, they have decided to do what lots of groups do when faced with a threat, which is go insular. Right. That's and right. it is uh, both a weakling response and a bullying response at the same time. Mm -hmm. And everybody sees through it outside of their little circle. Uh-huh. <laughs> everybody. Yep. And I just want to share a word with our listeners um, that is among the churches that are doing stuff, mm -hmm. that are going out into the community and having diaper drives and, you know, underwear drives for school kids and making sure that their members are tutoring in public schools, are volunteering in public schools, are uh, doing soup kitchens, donating to soup kitchens, providing meals at um, even even providing senior center meals, you know, yep. meals on wheels, that sort of thing. Um, those churches, the, the key word that you see over and over again in literature about how to grow your church, the key word is messy, M-E-S-S-Y. Uh -huh. You want to have a messy church. Yes, you do. And the Absolutely messy, the, when I, I, what I mean is physically messy. Mm -hmm. You want the kitchen to be busy. You want the children's room to be busy. You want the uh, craft room where you're making blankets for homeless people and hats for homeless people to be yep. messy. And so the idea of having, uh, you know, uh, neat, pristine, uh, flood-free crystal <laughs> cathedrals yeah. is over because what what people who are going to come to your church, bring their kids to church at some point, you know, if they can afford to have kids, and are going to make your church alive, what appeals to them is the mess, because that means you're doing something. You're right. not just sitting on your ass in a comfortable reclining seat and hearing about how great your life is because of Jesus. You know and, what that sounds like? Yeah. It sounds like faith without works. Faith without works is dead. Mm -hmm. Damn and, right. And uh, standing up for... <laughs> traditional marriage when most millennials can't afford to get married because of housing costs and mm. wages and we're not doing <laughs> anything about that is dead. And yeah. that's what I have to say about the Nashville statement. Trump called Chuck Grassley this week. He did. For some corn porn, as Wonkette put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he wanted to call Chuck to tell him of his great love of biofuels and Iowa <laughs> corn. <laughs> hey, you know what else Chuck Grassley does on the weekends, just in sort of his spare time? He's chairman of a committee investigating Trump Russia. That's what he is. Yeah. He's chairman of a committee investigating Trump Jr. 
Yeah, yeah. This meeting with Russia. So suddenly Donald Trump just just felt the need to call him up and saying, Chuck, you know, you, you know, I love you. You know, I love. I mean, corn. I, you know, I'm all behind you on the corn. Yeah, yeah. I love corn so much. Uh, what didn't make it through the week uh, was any action on pay equity. Thanks, uh, Ivanka. Ivanka. I thought that was, was such an important thing to her was women in the workplace. Right. Well, she was going to be the bigot whisperer. Yeah. She's yeah. going to sit in the White House and say, but daddy, treating ladies mean and wrong is bad. And he was going to say, oh, pumpkin, I suppose this one time we'll just get her done for you. And she would go, thank you, daddy. And that was her job. That's her. Yeah. That's supposed to be yeah. her job. That's why she has security clearances and gets to sit in on important meetings because that's her fucking job. And you know what? Ivanka, you had one job. You had one job and you mm -hmm. fucked it up because yep. guess what got rolled back this week? Yeah, well, and it's your it's women who are you. Right. Get pay equity, and women who are not you don't. And this right. is Sarah Palin syndrome. This yes. is absolutely Sarah Palin syndrome, uh -huh. and it is not sisterhood is powerful. This is no. this is not. I mean, if she really cared about women and women's rights and so forth, she'd be a very different person. But at right. the very least, it, it shocks me. I mean, this is this shows you that. Women Republicans, many women Republicans have no principles whatsoever because women Republicans who really care about the issues they claim to care about would be for universal maternal leave. Absolutely. Yes. You know, Period. a woman has a right to bond with her baby. Mm -hmm. uh, she should have paid time off to do that. Yes. And 75 percent of women who deliver a baby, 75 mm percent -hmm. go back to work in 10 days. Yeah. 10 work days because that's have. two weeks. That's their two weeks vacation. And they are saving vacation time to give birth. Right. Yep. That is that would not be happening if men got pregnant. <laughs> no. no. And this is what, again, absolutely, Ivanka is the, the sisterhood of the Chinese patents. Oh, and, you know? and, and let me make it clear. Ivanka went back to work after her third child in under 10 days. Because yeah. she had 24 hour nannies anyway. There you go. You have, if and as work long is as you're. Fun, work is, is where I'm glamorous. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go back to work. I can and, hand off my child in complete confidence and safety uh, yep. to the massive and, staff I have hired to tend to him because he is a future prince. I have no problem with with wealthy women having nannies. I understand no. that there are people who have a lot of responsibility out there, uh, work responsibilities, and they. Go back to work. And I understand that, that people do that. I'm not calling anyone a bad mother for doing that. No, absolutely. I am saying pay attention and and uh, endorse the rights of women who do not have that. Well, and as and, with... Oh, can, I'm, I'm oh, please. talking for yeah, just yeah. a minute. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that's been highlighted by Hurricane Harvey is poverty. People who can't evacuate because they have no car. People who can't evacuate because they have no money. Yep. They don't have money for a hotel. They don't know where to go. They don't have internet in their homes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there was a woman who worked, this is all over Twitter, a woman who was working in a Waffle House and was stuck in a Waffle House for two days and made $20 in tips mm -hmm. in two whole days. That was her income because she makes, you know, $3.17 or something an hour mm -hmm. before tips and just highlighting that. You know, the rest, as I said to many people on Twitter, were saying, this can't be legal. This can't be legal. Oh, all kinds of things can be legal. If the Restaurant Association of America owns the Congress, and they do, mm -hmm. then uh, restaurant wages can be as low as you want. Right. And <laughs> right. where did Donald Trump give his tax cut speech after he left Texas? In Springfield, Missouri. Missouri. Mm-hmm. And the Republican Party of Missouri mm -hmm. decided to celebrate that by tweeting out how wonderful it is that Donald Trump wants to put money in the pockets of average Americans. Yeah, that's a lie. The Republican state legislature of Missouri decided that cities cannot decide what the minimum wage is in their city. Mm -hmm. And they cut the minimum wage in St. Louis back to seven ninety five an hour. And, and cut back restaurant wages back to three something. Yeah, back to ridiculous. Last year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, they don't want more money in your pocket. They want no, more they... money in their pocket. Yeah. Well, and, and... and the hypocrisy is stunning still to me. Well, and I'm well, glad because that means I'm still human. I haven't, yeah. I haven't given up. <laughs> 
Well, when you when you boil at like as with the hurricane, why give money to Texas at all? Why support them at all? You know what's the what you know what's the what's the ethical principle? What's the moral principle at you know? Are at you place? asking me because we both know the answer? No, no. That. Well, that's what we that's what we talked about earlier. It's mm -hmm. oh, yeah. The government should be around to help people who need help. Right. That's their purpose. That's that's why you have governments, and that's why you establish governments among people. Mm -hmm. um, what is the um, ethical? Um, what is the reason that Ivanka Trump gave her child to nannies to be cared for? Yeah. She believes at some level that you don't just leave a baby in a drawer and go to work. Right. You have no, to have – you have to have some support system that lets you have the luxury, in her case, uh, of going off to work if you choose to because you know your child's being taken care of. Right. It, it is where you become a sociopath that you cannot imagine anyone other than your own socioeconomic group having that right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That everyone else is just fucked and I don't really care. I care that my rich friends are able to do what they want to do with their mm -hmm. lives and their bodies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're poor and you might need extended time with your child or you might need, I don't know, daycare, yeah. a decent school, you know, those things are are this are the are the equivalent of having a nanny and a support staff taking care of your child. And you can't extend your empathy one inch mm -hmm. to say, you know what, I was born to this life. They're born to a different life and maybe they should have a little bit of what I have. Because mm -hmm. that's what being human means. If you can't make that jump, you have no business being anywhere near anything where you get to decide the fates of other people. Well, and it is a, a, a belief. Well, it, and it is a belief that your problems aren't my problems. It's a belief that there is no such thing as society, as Margaret Thatcher famously said. Yeah. Yeah. And so... I mean, that is the thing that that really does turn on a light with some conservatives in comment threads mm -hmm. when we're talking about uh, the CHIP uh, program, which, by the way, is going to expire in mm -hmm. September and has to be renewed by bipartisan congr congressional action. Uh, this is the health care program for children. And uh, it covers, except there are some pockets where children are not still not covered, mostly in the South. Uh, all in Republican states, of course. Um, but 34% of children in this country are covered by this program. 34%. And 56% of children in this country are covered by their parents' employer. So just so you understand that the, the reason that some people are, children are not on Medicaid is because their parents' employer covers their health insurance, right? right? This, this is definitely a handout to employers who do not cover children's insurance uh it's not a giveaway to parents it's a giveaway to employers to not have to cover health insurance for families so that you understand that <laughs> mm -hmm. um but when i explain to people oh this is a handout you know this is why are we hand why am i paying for someone else to have kids blah 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 and you say to them uh this is actually uh, a situation where you don't want to send your kid or grandkid to school with another kid who has a virus and hasn't had any shots right and might get diphtheria or might have some communicable disease or mm -hmm. maybe there's a Zika virus out there and we need everybody, some weird thing where we need everyone to have insurance and go get inoculated against it. And, uh, you know, it's protection for you. Right. And if, if you don't want to see uh, the infant mortality rate skyrocket like it has in Texas and the maternal mortality rate skyrocket like it has in Texas. Mm hmm. If that bothers you, there is a way to prevent being bothered by that. Yeah. <laughs> you could fund Planned Parenthood, you for example. You could fund Planned Parenthood. Yeah. Uh, so this this is not just about uh, handouts to poor people. No. This, and I, I realize we're preaching to the choir here. But, there, but, but uh, there's, a, there's a philosophical underpinning to all of this. Yes. And the reason we keep talking about it is because they keep talking about right. it. And, and we because... have to push back. Everybody knows I love uh, Donors Choose and love giving to Donors Choose and so forth. Well, I uh, have found out that when I feel like I don't have enough money <laughs> to <laughs> donate to Donors Choose, yeah. and I see, but I do see something or something comes across my screen that really matters to me or I think would be really worth investing in, uh, I share it on Facebook and find out that there are people that have some disposable income that day and would be willing to help out. And uh, one particular teacher, uh, this one was in California, Mrs. Mittman, 
in Claremont High School, Claremont, California. More than a third of her students come from low-income households, Mm -hmm. and her teenagers are mostly at-risk special needs or English learners Mm -hmm. and have struggled in the traditional classroom, and she is teaching them science, Uh physical science. And she has decided that it would be a good idea to teach her students physical science by having them read The Martian. Yeah! Baby. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And it turns out that The Martian has been published in a school edition, which I assume means they took the naughty words out. Uh, well, I hope not. I mean, <laughs> geez, that's... Uh, this is a school edition that uh-huh. she, has per- she has asked for for her ninth graders. Now, you know, I'm sorry. I think that's OK. I think yeah. it's OK to publish a school edition of The Martian speaking as a middle school certified history teacher. Mm hmm. The reason you don't want the F word or a lot of swear words in the classroom. The giggling? Yeah, exactly. The distraction factor. It is not just because of angry parents and the PTO is going to get a letter and it's going to be a, you're going to be fired. I mean, yeah, all that's going to happen. Yeah. But if you are actually trying to get uh, (laughs) points across, (laughs) all you have to do is say fart in a middle school classroom. (laughs) Lost control. She said fart. Yeah. He said fart. Yeah. Yeah. So school edition of The Martian, I'm all for that. Uh, So she is going to do um, experiments in her class by reading The Martian and going through uh, the steps that Mark Watney takes. Oh, my God. Really? To land and escape Mars. Oh, that's awesome. I shared this on Facebook, and what's nice is uh, Donors Choose puts on there uh, notes from the people that donated. And some people don't. You can donate anonymously at uh, Donors Choose. And a donor from New Jersey gave money to this project and said, you were recommended by the Professional Left podcast. Woo-hoo! Happy to help spread the joy of books. Please give the podcast a listen. Aww. And Ms. Mittman said, thank you. Thank you. I will check it out. So uh, I'm going to make sure Ms. The... Mittman gets a clip of this. Yes. Ms. Mittman, we occasionally use the F word. Uh, oh, uh, big time. Yeah. <laughs> So you really, really don't want to share this. You don't want to play this in class because they will giggle and we say fart too. So, uh, yeah, you don't want to do that. But uh, we're so uh, pleased that this is such a uh, very creative way to teach science to students. And uh, I I think it's terrific. And I'm so glad that I can spread the word. What's that? What's she going to do? She's going to science the shit out of that class. She's going to science the shit out of this thing. Yeah. So thank you to our listener in New Jersey who helped top off that project on donors choose you guys are awesome and uh we also want to make sure we thank a listener in illinois uh-huh he sent you a bottle of scotch yes very it's nice almost scotch. all gone it's, it's it evaporates very quickly in the heat <laughs> and and with that scotch came a card with a hilarious picture of a kitty yes and so each week we post to our facebook page and website our new website uh-huh. an internet kitty sent in by you the listeners this week's internet kitty is Rutherford B. Hayes. He is a kitty of one of our podcast listeners that we are face-to-face friends with. We are. Uh, and in this picture, he is literally half out of the bag. Yeah. So, you know, go see Rutherford B. Hayes at our website and Facebook page. Mm-hmm. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. Don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local. And we also believe in shopping Amazon with our link if your alternative is a big box store. Mm -hmm. The Halloween candy is already up. It is. It's been up for a couple of weeks. Yeah. And it's delicious. It's just terrible. But look, uh, Halloween stuff, if you're not creative and you're buying uh, your, if you're not buying your costume at the Goodwill or Salvation Army or wherever, you know, thrift store that you're buying it at and you're buying a, a boxed costume, um, from a big box store. Check out Amazon. They've got good prices. And uh, it's I, apparently it's not too soon to shop for Halloween. I can't believe that, but great. I, I, um, I learned at the <laughs> store recently that you can buy yeah. an oil drum-sized bucket of Dum Dums for forty four ninety nine. So Middle uh, Child thought that was good value. That's good value for the next seven <laughs> years. 
course, after the first year, you become that stupid house that gives out those crappy suckers. So yeah, from from last year. Yeah. Don't go there. They suck. She, she did. She did try to put it in the cart and say, "Oh no, it's such a good investment." Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can shop our merch at Zazzle. You can shop and benefit us at Amazon, and you can spend locally. But whatever you do, folks, yeah, don't buy deep fried Twinkies from a fish restaurant. No, no, that's that was I... the line they cut from the Princess Bride. <laughs> uh, it was four things you're never supposed to do. Um, I can't believe that the fast food fish ro- restaurant chain, yeah, is selling deep fried Twinkies. Yeah, why would you not believe that, Blue Gal? <laughs> I know. It seems like a very America. Seems like a real. It seems like a real thing in the world, given the world we have. Approximately one percent of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you give all over the place to donors. Choose you're giving down to the hurricane. You're doing exactly everything you need to do. We trust you. To, if you take your money this week and give it to Hurricane Harvey relief, yeah. we understand. We understand. We and did that too. Never. Um, by the way, never. Um, you never need to say, "I'm really sorry. I couldn't give enough," or "I'm really sorry. I, I can't." I gave more. I couldn't give more. Yes. Never, oh my gosh. Ever need to say that? There's no obligation in any of this, um, and we're happy to do it, um, especially for people that are. Times are tight, and yeah. we're happy to be a voice well, for and, them. And I had to jump to the defense of uh, the Clinton's daughter yesterday. Chelsea? Um, Chelsea Clinton, because she donated $10 to a particular specific Hurricane Harvey uh, charity. And someone got up in her grill about Chelsea Clinton could afford more than $10. How dare she give $10? Right. <laughs> Which, you know, come on. <laughs> It's pretty clear Chelsea Clinton's giving more than that. Yeah. But I jumped in and said, I am absolutely positive that Chelsea Clinton thought about what she was doing and gave $10 to show that $10 makes a difference and to be an example to people. Mm -hmm. Because Chelsea Clinton giving a million dollars to something, like Donald Trump did today, by the way. He's going to do the Ed McMahon check now, he's decided. That's nice. For Harvey. That's nice. Um, I'm going to give a million dollars to Harvey Relief. Yeah. And- you know, that is about ma- telling everybody that I'm, I have a million dollars to give away. Right. That's brand. That's brand building. Right. That's brand. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, what Chelsea Clinton was saying was, I'm going to do this and please match me. Right. And I guarantee you, and I say this as someone who cashes checks that are donations, a person that is receiving donations would rather have 30 $10 checks than 10 $30 checks. Yes. Or one $300 check. Yep. Uh, spread it out, make a difference, and that way they can hit you up next time. They can right. hit you up when the next hurricane comes mm-hmm. because they need bodies of people who – because not everybody can give all the time. No, not at all. And so you need that – you need crowdsourcing. You need that expansion of giving rather than depending on, you know, yeah. <laughs> 71-year-old millionaires who want to make a point right. that day and – come up with this idea and decide to do it you can't depend on donald trump to do this every time well and and but as i know from being on like a finance committee for example um the 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 best indicator of future giving is Mm -hmm. past giving right right even if it's five bucks even if it's two bucks right it's five bucks makes a difference that's my that is constantly my refrain five bucks makes a difference and it, and it habituates you towards the idea that you can do a little bit and it means an enormous amount. It does. And so you shouldn't yep. feel, you know, when, when, when we leave the, the store and the fireman mm-hmm. out there with the boot, I, you know, I try to make sure right. that, that the middle child has a couple of bucks because it, yeah. be it should be a normal course of, of your day, of, of who mm-hmm. you are as a person mm-hmm. that you see need around you. And to, ex- to the extent that you can, you work towards – alleviating it and making the world a better place a little bit at mm-hmm. a time. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was first divorced and I was on food stamps and I was on fuel assistance mm-hmm. and I was living off of social security, the kids, social security mm-hmm. and prayers. You know, I yeah. re- literally, I mean, I didn't have a job. I didn't have, I was, you know, I had folders and was going to social service agencies trying to figure out what to do. Mm-hmm. And we would get, I would get, my three kids out of the car and there would be, uh, you know, them, them doing a fundraiser for kids or something, some local charity in front of yeah. the grocery store doing something. And I would hand each kid a coin, whether it was a dime or a pen, and 
youngest child was four. Yeah. So she got a penny because <laughs> she was going to drop it from here to the street, to the right. store, right? Uh, but I gave each child a coin to, to give. Mm-hmm. And I remember middle child saying, this is for people who are less fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But she had the ten dollar vocabulary. She didn't have. We didn't have ten dollars to scrape together. But <laughs> she had the ten dollar vocabulary, yeah. and you know, having that ability to say, you know, Mumbai needs right. help. Perspective. Right? perspective, perspective, yeah. And this perspective, we've had it all week with our dryer dying and getting the bill for the air conditioner, yeah. and 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 and, 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 and it's like we are so blessed. <laughs> You know, Mm -hmm. with first world problems, we are so blessed. Mm -hmm. So always keep that perspective. Know that a little bit makes a difference and uh, be an example to your family and to everyone else in doing what you can. Mm -hmm. And we so appreciate you. We love you. And uh, we know you're there for us. So thank you for being there. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter when you get a chance and thank you for doing that. And you know, we've got the new Twitter. Twitter is pro left podcast at pro left podcast. Mm-hmm. You go over there. We've got all our new corn stuff over there. It's... Like the picture of the corn with the head, with the earbuds and the pussy hat on. And it's all over there. So when you share those tweets that show the new show up, uh, they'll see the new logo and everything, which is really cool. We, we also have you a, again. We also have a YouTube page. Just saying. We now have a YouTube page. You can look up Professional mm-hmm. Left Podcast on the YouTube, mm-hmm. which is awesome. And again, the Yellow GOP has done amazing work. And uh, apparently, like I said last week, the kids are doing the Chromecast with that. So yeah, the kids with whatever the Chromecast. That is. Oh, Never it's... done a Chromecast. Don't know, don't know anything about it, but apparently it's a thing. And uh, I'm so glad that we're reaching out to those people that do the Chromecast. So wonderful. Can I get Chromecast on my flip phone? No, <laughs> Grandpa, you can't. <laughs> And I didn't, I didn't buy the washing machine where you can get the Chromecast on the washing machine, though yeah. I'm sure they're getting ready to make one of yeah. those. I wanted a dial and a button, and they said they don't make those <laughs> exactly, no more. Exactly, exactly, I said. Fine, fine. <laughs> can I have one that does not have electronics in it? And they went, right. no. No. Here's the manual. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> manual. Manual. I'll take my clothes manual? down to the river and beat them on a rock before I read a goddamn <laughs> manual about how to run a goddamn... <laughs> See, I'm getting, I'm practicing to be a curmudgeon. So you are good at doing it. a great job. You know what helps? You know what helps? More scotch, more scotch would really help. <laughs> anyway, if you want Drift Glass to be more grumpy now, yeah. Yeah. send another bottle of that really good scotch. That was you did enjoy that. I, really I will did. say, I really did. I, you I really I, did. I have a, you know, have one finger's worth a couple ice cubes, you know, in the evening, and it just was wonderful. Hey, Drift Glass. Yes. How are the internet kitties doing this week? You know, the Internet Kitties are taking a time machine forward to when the transgender ban study is completed, and they may never be back. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the flower and the switch play night. Let's think about living. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Class, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.